Hi, and welcome to my review of I Had That Same Dream Again. The story of how I ended up picking up this manga is somewhat uninteresting, but I'll tell it anyway. I was at my local manga store, spending a bunch of money as I usually do, and on a shelf I saw this manga that had a very simple but beautiful cover. It also had a huge sale sticker on it, and I picked up the whole collection for less than £5. It's hard to say no to a deal like that. The cover gave me slice of life vibes, and it's been a while since I read a manga all the way through. I don't follow many complete mangas, and I figured that even if it wasn't very good, I could do a review on it at the very least. I really didn't expect myself to get so enthralled by the story. I'm going to break this review up into three sections. The introduction, which will cover the beginning of the story and the characters that are introduced. The main part of the story, which will cover the bulk of everything that goes on. And then the end. I'll try to spoil as little as I can as I talk about this, but do be aware that there'll be minor spoilers throughout the review. If you want to read it first and then come watch this video, please go pick it up and give it a read. It's thoroughly pleasant. There also isn't a lot about this manga online. I found some reviews and some people talking about it, but it seems relatively unpopular. This means the amount of art I can reference to is limited, so please bear with me. Since there won't be a lot going on in the video, if you want to leave this playing in the background and just listen to my lovely voice whilst you do something else, then feel welcome to. Now that that's all out the way, let's get into the review. In the beginning of the story, we're introduced to our main character, Nanogo. A young girl in school who has relatively little friends. She instantly comes across as intelligent and curious, stating that she can't do PE because she has something wrong with her head. She gets told that no matter how much she doesn't want to do something, she should try, as she'll get better and better every time she does. This is a common lesson throughout the story, and it's good that they implant it at the beginning. After the scene in the school, she walks around introducing the reader to each of her friends. The first of which is a woman called Skangsan. It's clear that Skangsan is just a nasty name that she's called, but it's what Nanogo calls her anyway. It's somewhat sad that this woman decides to go by the name without even batting an eye. It's like she's used to it. She treats Nanogo like her child though. They play and snack and generally enjoy their time together. I love all of the scenes that they're in together because they're so sweet to each other. Skangsan acts as a sort of mother figure to Nanogo. We're also introduced to Obachan, an old woman who sits with Nanogo and talks about deep and emotional things such as what happiness is. Throughout the story, Nanogo is working on her school report, which is to think about what happiness is, or at least what it is to her, and she talks to Obachan a great deal about this. Obachan treats Nanogo very respectfully, almost as though she's far older than she is. They have a very mature relationship. They treat each other like equals, but Obachan is still clearly the grandmother type character that seems to look after Nanogo now and then. Speaking of which, another theme throughout the beginning of the story is that Nanogo's parents aren't really involved with her. She clearly misses her parents, and I wonder if the reason that she spends so much time with adults is because they aren't around. The last character to be introduced is Minami, a very sad teenage girl who hangs out on the roof of abandoned buildings. Each of these characters is super interesting, and trying to figure out how they're all connected is half the fun of reading the book. The innocent way in which Nanoko approaches each of them has a certain warmth to it. You feel as though each of these adults are genuine in how they act with her, because her pure innocence cuts through all of the boundaries that society have put around them. Now we'll go into the main bulk of the story. Here, the manga revolves around Nanoko having conversations with each of the people about what true happiness is. Each of them have different answers, and as we get to know them more, their stories only get darker and darker. I didn't expect the story to tackle such grim stuff, but it does it really well. It's nothing graphic, it's just so raw in its emotional assault that I couldn't help but feel a little bit sensitive after reading it. The stories of each of these people are sad, but they still understand what makes them happy. Also, in this main bulk of the story, we have Nanoko working with her school friend, Kiryu, who is her partner on the happiness project. I won't spoil anything, but the main character has their ups and downs with each of the side characters. But I almost felt as though Kiryu's story was just a side filler to bulk out the pages. During my first read, I wasn't sure why he was there and why there was so much focus on him, 
but it becomes clear that he's there because his relationship with Nanogo is what ultimately makes her develop as a character. During reading this part of the story, I got to thinking what it was really about. I understand the stories about Nanogo and her school and private life, but it felt as though there was more to come, stuff I didn't quite understand yet. I also want to point out that throughout the story Nanoko follows a black cat around. It waits for her, and it goes to visit the adults that Nanoko has conversations with as she moves around each of the side characters. The backstory of the cat did have me crying a little bit, I think there's some symbolism in there but I didn't want to dig into it too much. The story does a great job at tackling how complex people are. They may have done things that society thinks is bad, and they may have even done things that they personally regret, but they live with those decisions. They may show long lasting scars, either physical or mental, but that doesn't mean that they can't be happy, they just had to find their happiness, whatever that may be. The end of the story is interesting, and it's very difficult to tackle without spoiling the whole thing. There are a lot of twists and turns in the final part of this manga, some of which I predicted and I imagine you will too, but that didn't take away from the overall experience. We find out many things about each of the characters, but ultimately the story is about Nanogo, and her progression to the end is thoroughly heartwarming. The story got me thinking about a lot of things, one of those being that people change and struggle. It made me think about how people aren't just good or bad, they have grey areas. Sometimes someone is going through something and they'll act a way that they otherwise wouldn't. The story seems to revolve around regret a lot, and making the best decisions for your own happiness and I think that's a nice message to take away from this. But it also got me thinking about something else, masterpieces. When I read or watch something, I often come away from it and think about how it was a masterpiece. Me and my boyfriend both read I had that same dream again, but he came away from it saying that it was nothing special, that he wasn't surprised but enjoyed it overall. I, however, thought it was a masterpiece, and no, it's not the best manga I've ever read, but it was so comfy. And that's the feeling that came to my mind the whole time reading this. I felt comfortable. I don't think art or stories have to be shocking or life changing. A masterpiece can be a masterpiece in comfort as much as it can be a think piece. I just think things are perfect for different reasons, and I certainly think that I had that same dream again has its perfections. But read it for yourself and tell me what you think. Or if you've read this manga before, give me your opinion on it. This was my review of I Had That Same Dream Again. It took a while to work on this video, and it was hard with the limited art available to give examples of the manga, so please just pick it up, give it a go, take a risk on it, what's the worst that can happen? Also, like, comment, or subscribe if you'd like. I'm trying to upload more frequently, so hopefully you should see a few more videos coming soon. My overall review for I Had That Same Dream Again is 8 out of 10. It was thoroughly enjoyable. It was a very peaceful read. I enjoyed being enthralled by it over a cup of coffee in an afternoon but it's not the sort of thing I see myself rereading frequently. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I hope you guys enjoyed this review. This is Measured Manga signing off, you guys have a good one.